Hello everyone! Uh, since we started the day with a nice win uh, with the black pieces by Rashid Nejmeddinov, I thought we'd continue in the same style. Uh, this game here was played in the year 2000 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, the game was suggested to me by my brother-in-law, yes, the one that played against uh, Gary Kasparov. Uh, I will put his uh, Lee Chess link in the description below, so if you want you can challenge him uh, for some games. Uh, but this game here, it's uh, absolutely spectacular. It's, I mean, if you ha if you don't know what to play against e4, play this. Uh, so the game is played between Pablo Zarnitsky. Uh, he's a grandmaster from Argentina, and he's playing against uh, Fabian Fiorito, international master, also from Argentina. And Pablo Zarnitsky is a very strong grandmaster. He won the World Junior Chess Championship in 1992. Uh, won his Grandmaster title in 1994, and he represented uh, Argentina in the Chess Olympiad five times. So, so a very strong player. Uh, let's see this game. Uh, uh, Pavel Zarnitsky has the white pieces, and he plays e4. We have d5, the Scandinavian defense. E captures on d5, and now knight, knight to f6, not recapturing with the queen on d5. So this is uh, a modern way to treat uh, this opening. c4, and now we have e6, the Icelandic gambit. Uh, D captures on e6 and bishop captures on e6. So basically sacrificing a pawn for rapid development. Uh, D4, uh, bishop to b4 check, uh, bishop to d2 blocking, uh, queen to e7, now bishop captures, queen captures with check, queen d2 offering a trade of queens, uh, but of course you don't uh, gambit a pawn to trade queens, so queen back to e7, and now threatening some nasty discoveries with bishop g4 for example. And uh, black plays queen to e3. And this is, I mean, you have to block this discovery somehow. Bishop to e2 isn't really great because bishop captures on c4. You still can't uh, recapture. So black played a gambit and he just recaptured his pawn back. So everything is fine for black here. Uh, so after queen to e7, uh, queen to e3 was played. Although queen to e2 might have been a bit better. But uh, then again you're blocking the development of your own pieces. So it's, it's not clear. Uh, knight to c6 by Fiorito, and we have knight to f3. And this knight to f3 move was actually uh, the start uh, of a disaster for white. In this position, white wants to play bishop to e2, knight to f3, and castle. And uh, it's, I mean, th these are the two moves you want to play in the next two moves, but it's not the same in what order you play them. Uh, if you play knight to f3 first, which was played in the game, you'll see what happens. Bishop to e2 was was a better move, and it allows white to continue the game. Now bishop is guarding g4, knight to g4 isn't really uh, a serious threat now. Uh, but in the game knight to f3 was played, and Fiorito immediately jumps in with knight to g4. Uh, attacking the queen, queen to e2, and we have queenside castle. And now white doesn't really have a way to castle or get his king to safety. So h3 now, kicking the knight away, and here, if uh, black would retreat with the knight, then white would have plenty of time to, to finish his development, uh, but there is one move that totally wrecks white, and uh, and that's exactly what Fiorito plays. He plays rook h to e8, uh, completely ignoring that this knight can be captured, and uh, here uh, Zarnitsky captures the knight, uh, h captures on g4. Probably a developing move like knight c3 is better, but uh, again, you're getting you're getting uh, into into a bad position, whatever you play, so might as well grab a piece. Uh, h captures on g4, and here comes queen to b4 check. And uh, you can't really block this. If you play knight f to d2, either bishop captures on c4 or g4 uh, opens up a discovered attack from the rook to the queen, you lose the queen and the game. Uh, same thing if you block with this knight, again, bishop captures c4, S uh, same thing, you lose the queen and the game. So after queen before check, queen to d2 was played. And uh, here comes the magic. Uh, bishop to g4, now uh, opening a discovered a check from the rook on e8. Uh, bishop to e2 blocking, and now rook captures on e2 uh, with check. The queen of course can capture, the queen is pinned. So king captures on e2, and now comes knight captures on d4 with check. Uh, again, you can't move the queen, the knight can't capture, it's also pinned, so king to f1. Uh, and now comes queen to c4 check. Uh, if you play king to e1 here, then bishop captures uh, on f3 and uh, white, is, white is simply destroyed. Uh, none of his pieces are developed and uh, he's getting checkmated. Uh, you can't recapture the bishop or knight captures on f3, this will uh, 
fork your king and queen. So after this queen to c4 check, uh, king to g1 was played. And now here it comes. A, a knight captures on f3 with check. Uh, the king has nowhere to go. The knight has to be captured. G captures on f3. And uh, here we have uh, bishop captures on f3. You might think, why not grab the queen? Well, if you grab the queen, then knight captures on d2 with, with a tempo on the black queen, queen to e2, uh, f captures, queen captures, and now you're still better here and probably are going to win this game, uh, but again, it's queen against two rooks, so you'll have to work for your meal. Uh, so after g captures on f3, now bishop captures on f3 with the terrible threat of queen g4 check. Uh, trying something, uh, rook to h3 was played here, but you don't really have a way uh, of saving your queen, nor, nor is uh, Zarnitsky trying to do. Wherever you play, queen g4 is coming. So rook to h3, uh, preparing to meet queen g4 with rook to g3, but it doesn't help. Uh, queen to g4, check. Uh, rook to g3 blocking and now queen to h5 uh, threatening queen to h1 checkmate so rook captures on f3 only move that prolongs it and now again not capturing uh, the queen with the rook uh, but simply queen captures on f3 and in this position uh, <coughs> argentinian grandmaster pablo zarnitsky uh, resigned the game uh, it doesn't matter what you play you're either losing the queen as white or you're getting checkmated uh, and I mean, you can you can give up the queen for the rook, or simply you can't even develop. Uh, but but let's say you play something like queen to e3, you get rook d1 check, king h2, rook to h1 checkmate. And uh, other than that, there really isn't a move you can play. Black will simply pick up the queen, and the queen will beat knight and rook very easily. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, if any of you <laughs> don't know what to play against e4. Uh, do try the Icelanding Gambit, and if you are an Icelanding Gambit player, uh, do share your uh, success uh, in the comments. So yeah, uh, for, I would like to thank my brother-in-law for suggesting me this game. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.